This reminds me of the story of creation when everything was dark, dark. And the Spirit of the Lord came and He was, He moved, He brooded, he brooded over the place, over the whole earth. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. Hallelujah. Today we are inviting the Holy Spirit. of our help. Give him all the praise that he deserves. Open your mouth and worship God in the beauty of his holiness. Father, we worship you. In Jesus' name we have prayed. In the mighty name of Jesus. Our theme for this month is transformation. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18, it says, but we all with open face, beholding us in the glass of the glo in the glass, the glory of God, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as the spirit of the living God. We are going to open our mouth and say, Father, as I come into your presence, let me behold your glory in the name of Jesus. 
Father, let us behold your glory. The Bible said that as Aaron yes spake, he said the glory of God came like a cloud and covered the congregation. Let's call upon the glory of God, my Father and my God. Let your glory come like a cloud. Let your glory come like a dove. Let your glory come like a light. Let there be manifestation of your power. Let there be manifestation of your glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we are prayed. We are going to approach the throne of God with mercy. We are going to ask God to show us mercy. In the name of Jesus. That the, the theme of this month will be made manifest in our life. That in his mercy we will be transformed. In every aspect of our life. In our spiritual life. In our physical life. In our material life. Let there be transformation of the power of God in our lives in the name of Jesus. Father, we call upon you in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 41. He said there is one glory of the sun and there is another glory of the moon and there is also another glory of the stars. He said but for one star different from another. And in glory in every month there is a glory in every month there is a team there has been a prophetic utterance from the pastor to us from month on to month and this month he has proclaimed the month of transformation we are going to speak to God it's not just going to be a team it is something that is going to work for us I don't know that aspect of your life of your life that you need transformation it could be in your health you need a healing that's a healing transformation. It could be in your finances. It could be that job you are looking for. You are trusting God. This month is not going to pass you by. The Bible says there is one glory. He said there is another, which means there is a higher glory. That same second Corinthians in another translation, he said it's ever increasing glory. We are going to cry to God this morning. Father, give me ever increasing glory. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and talk to your father. Say, in my finances, let there be ever increasing glory. That is what transformation is all about. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says that the path of a righteous man shines brighter and brighter unto a perfect day. It is a transformational journey. It is never ending. It is ever increasing. In the name of Jesus. Say, my father, my father, in my finances, let there be transformation transformation in my career let there be transformation in that sickness that have been in my body as I leave this church today oh Lord let there be transformation in the name of Jesus in Jesus name we have prayed in the mighty name of Jesus the Bible of food is full of stories of men that God have transformed in different ways David was transformed from a shepherd boy to a boy who had courage and strength to be able to face Goliath. Jesus was transformed in the month of transfiguration and the Bible said that the glory of God covered him. I don't know that aspect of your life you want God to give you a touch. I don't know that part of your life you're expecting God to visit you. I want to tell you that this morning God is going to answer by fire in the name of Jesus. And so I want you to talk to God and say, Lord, change my story. Story. I don't know that story you want God to change. In this month of transformation, cry to him. You are in his presence. In his presence, there is fullness of joy. Speak to your father. He is our God. The confidence we have is whenever we call upon him, he answers us. That is a confidence. And we're going to say, my God, that aspect of my life, that story that is not pleasant in my life, let it change this morning. In the name of Jesus. Father, change it in the name of Jesus. Lord, change my story. In the name of Jesus. Speak to your father. Say, Lord, change my story. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be a change in my career, in my life, in my spiritual life. Renew my life, O oh Lord. Let there be transformation. Do not allow me to conform to the image of this world. Let there be a change in everything I do. In the name of Jesus. This month will not pass me by. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Revelation 21 verse 23. He said, and the city had no need of the sun. He said, neither of the moon to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it. 
And he said, and the lamp is the light thereof. In city of David, God is going to be our light in this month. In the name of Jesus. He's going to lighten our path in this church in this month of transformation. And Jesus, who is the lamp of God, will be our light. In the name of Jesus. And so we are going to cry unto God and say, Lord, let your light shine in every aspect of my life. In the name of Jesus. Father, let your light shine in every aspect of my life. Let Jesus be my source of light. Let God himself be my source of light. Let the moon, the sun cease to be my source of light. Let Jesus be my light. In the mighty name of Jesus. That light that shines in darkness and darkness can never understand it. Let that light shine in my life. In Jesus' name we have prayed. This morning when I was praying, God asked me that we will pray for our children. That anything that is going to bring accident upon any of our children as they go back to school. We are going to cry unto God this morning. That my father, my father, none of our children will be a victim of accident. In the name of Jesus, as they return back to school, male ke seke tele bo seke te, braka seke tele ke seke te, male braka saka taka teke te, maka seke tele braka seke te. In the name of Jesus, every spirit of accident from the pit of hell orchestrated against any of our children, Father, we stand against it. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, we have prayed. In the mighty name of Jesus. Finally, we are going to commit this service into the mighty hand of God. That everyone that God is going to use to minister to us in one way or the other. That his glory will stand behind them. In the name of Jesus. Let it be of him alone. Let it be of him alone. Let it be of him alone. In the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Father, we want to bless your holy name. Lord, we thank you because you alone is the true God. There is no longer argument that you are the only God. We return all the glory, honor, thanksgiving, and praise unto you. Let your name alone be magnified. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Praise he the Lord. Hallelujah. Jam those hands for Jesus. Jam those hands for Jesus. Are you happy to be in church today? I want you to turn to your neighbor in the right and tell your neighbor, God bless you. And turn to your left and tell the other person in your left and say, God bless you more than me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Announcement time. Information time. Praise the Lord. Good morning, church, and welcome to City of David, where you experience love beyond reason. Praise the Lord. We want to say welcome to all our online guests who are joining us online. We want to appreciate God for every us for the first time. If today is your first time of worshiping with us, can you please signify by raising your hand? Praise the Lord. We need to do more evangelism. Hallelujah. Praise God. You are welcome to church in Jesus' name. Our senior pastors are Pastor Femi Alabi and his lovely wife, Pastor Ayo. We want to believe that they are joining us online and we send our greetings to them in Jesus' name. We celebrate all those whose birthday and wedding anniversary are this month. We pray that the Almighty God will fulfill your days in good health and he will also prosper you in every side in Jesus' name. As I said earlier, we all know that this is our prophetic month of transformation. Transformation is all about renewing and changing from one level to another. I pray that you will experience the transformational power of God in Jesus' name. And the scripture is 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. And it said, But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of God, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as the Spirit by the Lord. Hallelujah. 
Our Sunday school continues today by 5 p.m. Please join us for an interactive study with the Word of God. It is the Word of God that sharpens us and makes us who we are. And the topic today will be studying the book of Thessalonians. And as we all join, may God bless us in Jesus' name. Our night of victory is coming up on Friday, 19th April. Please don't miss it. It's going to be an in incredible night in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Children's Church. This is a reminder for everyone with children between year three to five. Just to remind you that you need to pick them upstairs at the end of service. And please, let's ensure that our children are potty trained from the age of three to be able to be in the children's church. Our teenage church has started. Let's celebrate our teenagers as they return back to their church. Please encourage your children. If you have teenagers, encourage them to be part of it. Please, let's celebrate them as they go. Hallelujah. They are the future generation of this church. Praise the Lord. All workers should know that mandatory workers training in church will continue every Sunday by 9 a.m. All workers are also expected to be part of it. If you do not have a department, you are actively involved. Please consider serving in one of our many departments. We have the sanctuary cleaning, drama, children's church, Sunday school, choir, ushering, and technical. Please, if you are, the, if you are early this morning, you'd have heard the man of God talking about different ministries and different operations and different things we can do in the church of God. Let's be part of it. I'm also a victim of that. And by the grace of God, we'll all be do better than we have been doing in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Please remember, you don't need to carry your body alone. If you have any worries or any needs, please speak to our pastor, Pastor Femi Alabi, or his wife. Praise the Lord. We have our Brighton, um, Brighton family trip. If you're happy about this, shout hallelujah. Give a hand offering to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our Brighton family trip is coming up on 25th of May. Please try and be part of it. I'm sure it's going to be wonderful. Praise the Lord. Please contact the Kintoin if you want to be part of it. God bless you as you enjoy the presence of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Father, we just honor you this morning. I want us to just lift up our voices to recognize that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is already in the house. Our prayer this morning is that the Lord Almighty God take us back to the heart of worship to reconnect with our first love, which is Jehovah God. That should be our prayer this morning. Because without Him, we are nothing. We can do nothing. Father, we worship you this morning. We give glory to your name. Lord, we honor you. Father, your name be praised. Hallelujah. The heart of worship. Oh! 
shared it with us in Sunday school before, maybe years back now. And in the 1940s, there's the professor of theology. His name is Professor Hall. O. Har Har. Professor of theology in England. And he had so many students. So one of these days, he took them on a trip. And they went to a place called the Airport Rectory in England. So Airport Rectory is the home of John Wesley, John and Charles Wesley. Do we know John Wesley? Amen. A revivalist. It's based on the work, works of men like John Wesley. That's why we are standing today. So Professor Hall took the students, the theology students, took them on a trip. And then he was taking them from one room to the other, took them to the kitchen, took them to the study, showed them all the books that John Wesley studied during his lifetime. And then he took them upstairs to his room. And when they got to the room, he asked the students to file around the bed. And they walked around. And one of the students noticed two well-worn patches just by the side of the bed and raised his hand and said, what are these? And Professor Hall explained to him that those marks that you see belong to the marks of the knees of John Wesley. How he kneed beside his bed daily, every day, months, years, praying for revival. Hallelujah. And then he went on and on and told them stories about John Wesley. And then they had to leave. And when they got to the bus, as usual, I started counting one, two, three, to see that all the students are complete in the bus. And one was missing. So he had to go back into the house. And then he started looking, searching everywhere. He couldn't find the missing student. And then he went upstairs to the room. And then he saw the shoulder and the head of someone from across the bed. Kneeling exactly at that point where John Wesley 
knelt several years and he was praying. He said, God, let revival begin with me. Let it begin in my life. Let transformation start with me. If I'm going to change the generations to come, it has to start with me. I cannot give what I do not have. And who was that student? I've told this story before. We can't remember. Billy Graham. Hallelujah. Billy Graham. And the story came to pass. The plea, that desire that he had came to pass in his life. Brethren, this morning, will you lift your hearts to the Lord Jesus and say, Jesus, let transformation begin with me. Let it begin in my life. Let there be a change, the manifest presence of God. Let it be seen in me. Let me not be a Christian in name only. But let there be a manifestation of your true presence. Begin to pray this morning. Begin to ask that the glory of the risen king would be upon your life. You and I today in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We lift you high. We exalt you because you are God. We magnify you, Lord, because it's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about your will. It's all about your plan and your purpose. That your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let it be so in our lives today and forever. Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's have our seats. Amen. Amen. I just started with that story to warm up us, to warm us up. Amen. Because today is going to be a day of stories. Hallelujah. It's going to be a day of stories. I want to appreciate uh, my pastor, my papa, and my mama. They say we should not be using the word papa and mama again. But indeed, they are our papa and mama, spiritual papas and mamas. God bless them. So Pastor Femi and Pastor Ayo, they are not here, but Pastor Emeka and Pastor Mrs. <laughs> She's smiling at me. Yes, they are gloriously seated here in God's presence. Hallelujah. Do you want us to, like, say something to them? Perhaps maybe a clap offering. Let's just clap to them. Let's clap for them. Let's clap for them. With Jesus' joy in your heart, please clap for them. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. I just want to appreciate them for the opportunity that they have given me on behalf of my family and myself to make this platform available. Because sometimes you have a message but you don't have a platform. And sometimes you have the platform, you don't have the message. But when there's a message and then there is a platform, you know it's indeed worthy of praise. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you, pastors. Amen. Transformation. Hallelujah. I looked at it deeply. And I could only coin it in a phrase for myself to understand it based on the scripture that I read and I saw. And I titled this teaching because I'm a teacher, I'm not a preacher, sorry. Present but not public. Present but not public. It sounds somehow like, how is that transformation? But we will get there. My name is Yemi Eson. Sunday school teachers and students, we do not need to introduce ourselves. We know ourselves. Amen. Well, that is me. But it's not about me today. It's about Jesus. Hallelujah. John 11, 54. John 11, 54. I'm just going to read that because that was where I coined that phrase from. Amen. It said, therefore, Jesus no longer walked openly. Another translation says, Jesus no longer walked publicly 
among the Jews, but went from there into the country. If you want to put it into context, you read the previous, you know, how that, this, before this phrase came about, before we got to this verse, what had happened. We'll get to that. But I want to take us back because Pastor Maker started this journey last week. I wasn't here, but I was home watching. And I started to talk to us about how the Israelites were brought out of Egypt. And I want to go a little bit back, you know, before then. How this journey for you and I, how it all began. You know, when God had a desire in his heart, he had a desire, a burning desire in his heart to reveal himself. He wanted people to know him. He wanted, he just wanted a, 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 a people, so to say, that he could call his own, who he will reveal himself to, and they will reveal himself. You know, he wanted himself to be known, and then he made men, you and I. Started with Adam and Eve. And as he was planning, devil was looking. Barely had the Lord God turned his back, the devil came calling. And we know the story. Sin came. You think God will just say, oh, I'm done. Let it just end. Close the chapter. No. Scripture said that Enoch, in this journey that we're, you know, we're talking about, started to love the Lord and was walking with God. And if you look at Genesis 4.26, Scripture recorded that everybody, men, at that time, started to call on the name of God. So it just seems that, oh, there is hope. Oh, my God. We know what happened shortly after. People were doing whatever they like. Immoralities here and there. Building towers. We want to be like God. Chaos everywhere. Amen. And then God was angry. Send the flood. But even that, you will still think, oh, should I just end it? What is the need for all this? Well, he looked, and then he saw Noah, and said, Noah, by building the ark, and by preserving humanity, you walk with me. And then the journey started again. And then came Abraham, the father of faith. And you think with Abraham, Oh, God will now, long, will now be satisfied and the devil will now be said, oh, I think I should just call it quit and not continue with this. But no. Men started to worship idols. Men started to do all sorts, building images here and there. Something else outside God And then God had a covenant with Abraham and said, with you, I will build a new nation. I will raise a new people. People who are marked, called by my name. And then we know how Abraham gave birth to Isaac and Isaac, Jacob, Israel. And then Israel was lost in captivity in Egypt. You know that story, right? So many years, Israel was in captivity. And then God said, Mo, Auntie Mo is not here. Moses, go and save my people. Bring them out of Egypt. Bring them out of captivity. 
just like you and I today. We've been brought out of where we were. I don't know. So many. You know how many of us are here now? I don't even know where I would have been because I can't even, I can't even recount the number of places, the number of things that I have done. So he brought them. You know, Pastor Mika was telling us last week, he brought them out as he had, brought, he, had, he had brought us out as well. And then they had to go through the wilderness, do all sorts. And then they started again. The same circle, again, building images, worshipping idols. And by the time we got to the book of Judges, hallelujah, the writer of Judges could not even describe the many things they were doing. And what did he say? He said, everybody is doing what was right in their eyes. Because he could not say, oh, this one was committing fornication. This one was committing, uh, this one was too numerous. He just said, the summary was that people were doing what was right in their eyes. So today I can wake up and say, I'm a man. Tomorrow I can decide to say I want to be a goat. And then somebody else can say, please, please, I want to go and be living alone. I don't want to associate with anybody. I'm a monkey. That was the story in the book of Judges. People were doing what was right in their eyes. I've recorded that there was no king in Israel. And this story continues. God was still not tired to say, I am tired. I don't I just want to be with my angels and my elders and the host of heaven and just be done with this group of people. But no, he still went searching. And he brought Ruth. And Ruth married Boaz, hallelujah, to the school people. And then Boaz gave Bet. Did you, did you, did you uh, Boaz gave birth to who? Eh, eh, I will not tell us. Go on. Ah, amen. Obed. Bra Obed. His name is closer to the Obed. It's just the change of the S and the, for the D. And then, 400 years later, Jesus came on the scene. Somebody said, hallelujah. No, somebody said it. That's why I'm echoing it. You would think that with Jesus coming on the scene, then we will say, ah, now we can finally rest. And Jesus was going about doing things. Doing things. That's the phrase, the closest phrase that I can use to what we say. You know, in this dispensation, say uh, you're running things or you're doing things. Jesus was doing things. Anywhere he shows up, you see the eyes of the blind being opened. You see people transforming lives, changing things. Just trying to reveal God that this is God. This is the message that I've brought. This is the hope that I've come to show humanity. You think they will be happy? No. Then in John 11, 54. Because they sought to kill him. Despite all the things. And just recently he had woken Lazarus. They sought to kill him. They're like, it's making life difficult for them. And then Jesus no longer walk, walk publicly. Us, this is where I am going to. Where Jesus no longer walking publicly. When he no longer walks publicly in our church, in our homes, in our life as individuals. I call myself a Christian and I'm not different. From someone who is not a Christian. When in the church, all we have is ceremonies and rituals. We're just taking the box. 
okay, choir finished singing. Um, and then we now take the sermon. And okay, it's now time for announcements in whatever order. And then we go home to be back on Wednesday. And then the word out there, people are doing what is right in their own eyes. The present, but not public, Jesus. When in our homes, it's how I feel I want to do my thing, I want to run my home. That is how I want it. It's no longer about the will of God or his plan and purpose. You give me one, I give you one. You give me 20, I give you 20. If you don't give me anything, you get nothing. And God wants to manifest himself. He's present, but it's not public. Why? Because you're squashing him. You're squashing him, squashing him with. For some of us, it's just about, I don't care. It's, what are they doing there? God help me. One of the days that I dare mention is on the school that if you're present in a meeting, be present. If you are not present, God is not going to kill you for that. Don't go away. Don't be multitasking. And then, oh, all hell almost broke loose on my head. I'd be like, oh, what are you saying? You don't want us to come. You don't want, I have to take care of my children. Valid excuses. But what if God says, well, I have to hang the power, Pastor Emeka. Yours can wait. You'll be happy. If he says, Oh, I have a meeting now that is very important with my host of heaven, your problem can wait. Will you be happy? Will I be happy? Present, but not public. Wondering why our lives are not changing. So I'm squashing you. Amen. This message is for you and I, everybody. You see me, and I'm standing here, I'm no earlier than you. It's just a wake up call for us to say that in this month of transformation, Jesus wants to be present and public. He wants to be seen. The manifest presence of God. That is what transformation is. Amen. And so when Jesus could no longer walk publicly, we know the rest of the story. Part of divine plan, he was killed. But before he was killed, he said something to his disciples. He said, it is expedient, it is important that I go away. Because the Jesus in this form is limited by location. I can only be in one place at a time. He said, but I will give you another helper. What do we mean by another helper? It's not something different. It's something in the same manner like himself. He said, I will give you one who can be with you forever. And what's the point? It's still all the same thing. The plan has not changed. The Holy Spirit, who is going to come, was going to reveal Jesus. And Jesus, the true image of God, is going to show us his father. And not just only that. There's going to be a work in our lives that will make us now reflect the father. Where the father is no longer like an imagination to people. Where they can see Pastor Mika and say, this is Jesus. Isn't that what they said about the apostles? They said they saw them and they, they perceived that they had been with the Lord. Because they saw Christ in them. You see why our children now, church is now boring to them. Because they can't see anything new in what you do. Where all we talk about is, oh, 
God of Abraham, God of Israel, God of his God, and they cannot see it. God of me manifesting. Hallelujah. Transformation is present and public. So the Holy Spirit came. And where is he now? Where is he? He's in us. We agree that he's in us. He's present in us. We know, we are sure. Because that's why you know that you are the sons of God. He says he will be a witness in us that we are the children of God. So the spirit of God is in us. He's present, but is he public? So that's the question this morning. Is he public? Has our lives changed in any form, shape, or manner? Can I say of myself, since I received him, my life has been transformed. Can I say that? Amen. You say that the, the, the sin of the Old Testament was that they ignored God. You know? They did not acknowledge him. The sin of the New Testament. They did not acknowledge Jesus. They killed him. Spot him out of that. And then they were looking for him in that. They said, oh, they, they wanted him to be at the feast of Passover. And they were looking for him. They could not find him in the temple where he will ordinarily be. Where in the church, people will run to, to say, let me come and find Jesus. And then they cannot find him. That was what happened in the New, in the New Testament to them among the Jews. Which was like they departed. They went somewhere else. But in this newest testament that we are currently writing, with our lives, you and I, the greatest sin is ignoring the Holy Spirit still the same thing. Amen. And that is why the church is just the church in name only. It cannot heal any sick person. It cannot, let's not even talk about raising the dead. We cannot even love our neighbor. We barbite, sick, ignorant, We are the lowest of the lowest. A lot of people abandoned our jobs in Nigeria. We came to the UK. CEOs of companies have come here. They're doing care work. It's good. It's honorable. It's that where God wants you to be. And you will rather ignore the presence of God and go after that work. Like, my life depends on this. I need to feed my family. There is someone waiting for you. He come. This is the least that you will ever be. There's a better version of you. We have not seen the best version of you. But you see that look. We just want it to happen. Oh, no, 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 no. And we are where we are. You think you cannot be CEO of a company in the UK? Because it's not your fatherland. When your father in heaven says that the earth is his and the fullness thereof. But the crumbs that we get is enough for us. Just like the children of Israel were satisfied with the crumbs from Egypt. They didn't want to go. They got to the wilderness. They were like, should have left us there present and public. That is the cry of God. That is the cry of Jesus. And that is the cry of the Spirit in this dispensation that you and I need to be transformed. 
that manifest presence of God. The manifested presence of the Holy Spirit must be seen in our lives so that we'll see the best version that God wants us to be as far as the earth is concerned. Remember the Lord's prayer. He said, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So there is something missing that we're not getting. That the will of God in heaven is what should be operational on earth. So if you see anything different from that, then there's a problem. So my problem, my focus should not be in what I find doing now. Like I want to die there. I want to die there. But that presence of God daily seeking me. What's our anchor scripture? we have it. Because I'm concluding already. Please, can we have it? Amen. said, but we all, we all, we all, all of us, amen, with unveiled face, beholding have to look. I have to tell myself this is not the best version of me. So I have to look and continue to look. And then he said, why we are looking? See, there is looking and there is looking. You can look but not see anything. There's need for revelation. There's need for revelation because then you can see clearly and see with understanding. Scripture says that the children of Issachar, they understood times and seasons and they knew what Israel ought to do per time. That is what we are talking about. Like when we behold, we have a revelation that, okay, this is what God wants me to do. This is what he wants me to say. This is his thought. This is his purpose. This is his will for this time. And it's not going to be what is right in my own eyes. And then we begin to transform. You think the transformation is going to be by yourself? Look at what he said. Let's continue. So we are transformed into the same image from glory to glory. Just as by by the spirit of the Lord. And that's why I said that the greatest sin of this New West Testament is ignoring the spirit. And that is why we continue to have present but not public if we ignore him. His mission is to reveal Jesus. that's the revelation that I'm talking about. That when you're looking, wherever you're looking, in the word of God, in hearing sermons, in even seeing people's lives, in reading cues that he drops on the way, as you go to work every day, things that, you know, you will just see and ignore. He will reveal it and give you a message in it that this is the way. Walk in it. This is the plan. Fulfill it. But we need the Spirit. Because your eyes and your eyes. Yeah. Yeah, yes. By the Spirit of God. So in this month of transformation, brethren, it's just a call to just see like I was telling us about Billy Graham, that it, oh, it's all about the desire. That's where it starts from. And then when you have the desire, I always say unquenchable desire, that's what I pray for. And even if I want to let go and say I'm tired, 
there's something in me that won't just let me go. It's unquenchable. And then daily, this just begin to walk back in by the Spirit. The Spirit is ever willing to help. Let's not deceive ourselves. You say, I'm trying. I just don't know what to do. No. All he needs is the acknowledgement. All God wanted in the Old Testament was an acknowledgement. All Jesus wanted was an acknowledgement. Spirit wants is an acknowledgement. To say, before you do anything, ask him, be my partner. I want to align with you. I don't want to be going this direction when you're going that direction. And then the transformation that we're talking about. This, this. Let me just tell you, many of us think that the transformation is all about, oh, I used to sin, I no longer sin. That is See, people are out there dying of cancer, wars, war everywhere, it's killing people. Like, I'm just like, kidnappers will come, kill their own. Sickness will come, take their own. Wars, floods, everything will come. They just kill people here and there, here and there. Daily dying. But believers, they're not doing much. Jesus is present. The Holy Spirit is present. If you want to, like now, you know, tell ourselves that I have the Holy Spirit, we now start to speak in tongues. We now be shaking. tell you. When I was growing up as a child, there were not too many questions. You don't even question so they just tell you something. It's just like, okay, it's like that. One is one, two is two. You see these children here. Oh God. They will ask you some questions that even you will be like, I don't know that. Oh, who am I seeing now? That is the generation, the newest testament that we are writing currently. With Jesus be public and not just present. Can we rise up to our feet? Amen. Let's have a song which I love to sing so much. It's an old song, but I know many of us, the old schools, we still know it. Jesus, we enthrone you. Hallelujah. Standing here in the midst of choir, we finish.
song. I don't know. That song just did something to my spirit. We're going to sing it again. You know yep. what we call customer satisfaction? So many of us that are satisfied customer of the grace and mercy of God. That we don't know where we would have been left for the grace of God. And grace found us, brought us. And grace is still manifesting, doing beautiful things in our lives. Transforming our lives, changing our lives. God wants to be public. And he will not rest. You and I can fade away. But he said, even stones, he will raise up to manifest his glory. God be here for some Jesus. you are all that we need, Lord. You are all that we need. And so, Father, with our hearts as one and our voices as one this morning, we ask for more of you. And to you who is able to do exceedingly abundantly, above and beyond what we can ever ask or think. We ask that you will grant our request. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Hallelujah! 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 See, I told us before that I'm a teacher. I don't know how to shout. <laughs> you know, preachers, they have all the paparazzis. Amen. I'm sorry to use that word offering time brethren hallelujah it's offering time amen amen let us just
just with Jesus, join our hearts, package our offering. There's no need for a message for offerings, you know. Understanding. We drive whatever we do. We learn. Fire. Hallelujah. Let's rise up on our feet as we give unto the Lord joyfully. We do just hallelujah. We're just waiting for the musicians to give us a bit of, you know, razzle dazzle. But let's rise up on our feet as we give unto the Lord joyfully. We just preached about transformation. May the Lord transform the musicians in Jesus' name. Your voices now sing praises unto God for all the things that He has done. Oh, for we are to Him, is a body Father, we ask, O oh Lord God, that you multiply us, multiply your grace in our lives, that our lives will not remain the same. 
in the name of Jesus. We pray for our church. We pray for every member, every child, every man, every woman. That our lives to continue to be a true representation of you and your kingdom. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. David, let us put our hands together for Jesus. Let us put our hands together for the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Ancient of Days. Some of you are clapping like you're clapping for me. Some of you are clapping like you're clapping for Dr. You hear me? I said, let us give all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. Come on, church. Clap your hands, all oh, you people. Clap your hands, all you people. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. 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 So I wanted us to practicalize what we have been taught today. Dr. Yemi talked about being present and we also want God to be public. So I want us to clap so that those who are outside those in the public can know that God is present in this place. Clap your hands, all you people, and make a joyful noise to the Most High God. For our God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. My God reigns. Our God reigns. Yes, He reigns. Yes, He reigns. Amen. 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 How many of us are taking something away today? How many of us feel like our hands are full and ready? Amen. 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 Dr. Yemi, we pray that God will continue to bless and strengthen you. And that out of the, uh, out of the abundance that the oil has poured out of, more will be returned back unto you. And the same water that you have watered upon God's people that God will pour upon you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, church, we're still in the month of transformation. And if there's anything you're going to take away from today's message, I would say this. That let your transformation be your present story, not your history. Because there are some of us who have been changed before, but are no longer changing. You are happy with where you are. You have told God, this far and no more. But let your transformation be your present story and not your history. That Christ will continue to be glorified in your life. Amen? That Christ will what? Continue to be glorified in our lives. Amen. When Bro Chinedu was praying this morning, he talked about how there's the glory of the star, of the different stars, the moon, and the sun. Each thing has its own glory and its own opportunity to shine. That you yourself will not miss your opportunity to shine. That the pathway that God brings your way, you will not misuse it or misplace it or you are allow the Lord God Almighty to shine through you. Amen? Because how many of us know that the moon has no light of its own? Even though the moon is a celestial body and the moon spins around, there is no light in the moon. Where does the moon go? This light comes from the sun. So don't, do not make yourself a sun when you are a moon. Amen? Allow the Lord to use you and allow the Lord to be glorified in your life. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 If you if I thank God our 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 services are recorded, so please I encourage you to go back, listen again. Um, our pastor and pastor missus they were watching and they were just excited. So we thank God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Um quickly before we close out today's I just want to just go through a few announcements. But before I do that, do we have anybody who today's your first time in City of David Stevenage? 
you are here and this is the first time you come. Anyone? Okay. So as Brother what did you say? You said that we have to do more evangelism, right? Okay. So all of us, amen, we have been charged. Hallelujah. All right. Um, a few things I want to bring to our notice. First and foremost, next week. So not this week we're going into. The week after is our festival of life. So do, amen. Are we excited? Hallelujah. So on the 26th, 26th of this month is our festival of life. Um, so let us all be looking forward to that. It's in Manchester. So even if you cannot make it to Manchester, it will be online as well. So do not miss out on that. And for all workers, the workers rally is coming up as well. Same week, I believe the workers rally is on the Thursday, the day before. So please workers, please sign up. It's multi center. And I believe our closest center is going to be the central office in Steve Village. So I want to encourage each and every one of us, let us register, let us make our time to be part of that. And the Lord God Almighty will bless us richly in Jesus name. Amen. Today we have Sunday school. Sunday school, we're looking at Christianity and governance. Last week we looked at Christianity and socialization and we talked about how the fact that God has called us to be social beings. Christianity and governance, we're looking at our place in the order of things and how God can use us in the structures that have been built in our society. So let us not miss out on that in Jesus' name. Um, I was also excited when I heard that the, the women have decided to be generous and expand the women's day to become a family day. Because initially when they said that all the women were going away on Saturday the 25th, all the men started worrying, going like, who is going to cook? Who, is, <laughs> who will look after the children? Who? Ah. So now they've said that it's now family day. Now, it was me, I said the women should just go. Oh, I thought you people were the ones that gave us baby family day. Okay. So, in the generosity of their hearts, and because this is the month of transformation, they have transformed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. But please, um, let's just take note of the day. Um, I think we need more detail about how much are people paying and what's, what's going to happen. So, Dick Nestoy, people will be coming to you to know more about that. Um, do not miss out on that. This Friday is our night of victory. Amen. Hallelujah. Church, this Friday we're going to be here at 7 p.m. Don't miss it. Do not miss it. Every time we come here, um, it's an opportunity for us to give glory to God. Because the same way how the moon has no light, we come to give glory to him so that he can be glorified in us. It is, it is like if you've ever used a rechargeable battery, you know that at some point you have to go and recharge. And there's something about corporate worship. There's something about corporate worship that is so um, uplifting. So I want to encourage each and every one of us, let us, let us, let us, let um, us, make ourselves available on Friday at 7 p.m. Amen. The choir will be here, and I know that all of us will be here in Jesus' name. Amen. Friday, 7 p.m., do not miss out our night of victory, and the Lord God Almighty will bless us richly in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, hallelujah. Our pastor, as I've said before, our pastor sends his greetings. Before we close out, I just want us to spend some time in prayer. Just to pray because it's necessary for us to see what is going on and not just be silent as believers. When we talk about God's manifest presence, part of God's manifest presence being made public is also in the place of intercession. Amen. If we are aware of the challenges in our nation, in the world at large, and we remain silent, the Bible says that and he sought for a man who will stand in the gap. He was not looking for a man who was close to the problem or a man who was even in the fire. He just needed one man 
people will stand in the gap. And so this morning, I want us to pray concerning the nations. Um, we'll pray for the United Kingdom. There's an election coming up at the end of this month, 2nd of May. And there's a lot going on in, that is changing the trajectory of this nation. And there's a need for us as a church to pray ahead, to send words so that this land will favor us. Um, but also, if you've been watching the news, you know that lately the, the Middle East has heated up again. They're talking about drones, drone strikes. This morning I read that even the, the Royal Air Force is actually going to send planes to go and shoot down drones. And all of these escalations, yes, wars happen in so many places in this world. But there are certain things that when you see these escalations and you are quiet, when the eventual repercussions come out, we cannot blame God. Amen? So this morning, let's just spend the last this few minutes and let's just rise up on our feet and call upon the Lord. The Bible says in the book of Psalm 24, Psalm 24 is a psalm that we know very well. It says that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. It says the world and they that dwell therein. Why? Because he has founded it upon the seas and he has established it upon the waters. Church, let's open our mouth this morning and cry unto the one who the earth is his and say, Father, Lord God Almighty, we lift the nations unto you. The Bible says, ask and I will give you the nations as an inheritance. Church, let's open our mouth this morning. Let us practice that the Lord God Almighty, let's, let us ask that the Lord God Almighty will manifest in these situations, in the United Kingdom, in the Middle East, that the hand of the Lord will be made manifest. That that's where, that where, where we're hearing signs of wars, where there are tremors and there's troubling. Because there's so much going on around the world. But in these particular two places, let's just lift them up to the Most High God. The one who is the one who is able to go in. The scripture says that lift up your heads, O ye gates. He is the one that is able to go in. They might be everlasting doors, but when the King of Glory stepped forward, he is able to go in. Because even the gate said that, who is this King? <laughs> the Bible says that he is the Lord of hosts, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Come on church, open your mouth, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, that the King of Glory shall come in. Who is this King of Glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. So open your mouth and cry out. Say, Father, Lord, the earth is yours and the fullness thereof. The lands and the waters and the seas, they all belong to you. Who is man, O God Almighty, that he can stand before you? Kings and prophets, they come and they go. But the Lord's throne remains. The Bible says that we should pray that thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth. Church, let us pray and say, Lord God Almighty, stand, O God Almighty. Father, Lord, arise, O Lord. P Prophet cried and said, arise, O Lord, and let the enemies be scattered. Arise, O Lord God Almighty, and let your glory be made manifest. Arise, O God Almighty, and shine, O God Almighty. We pray for light. We pray for light. We pray for light. We pray for light, O God Almighty, that out of the deep, O God Almighty, out of the deep, O oh God Almighty. Out of the deep, O oh God Almighty. Out of the deep, O oh Lord God. Lord, make your power manifest, O oh God. Lord, fight the battles, O oh God Almighty. Say He's glorious in His holiness. He's fearful in His praises. Bible says that he is like a fire, an all-consuming fire. That the Lord God Almighty, you will arise, O God Almighty. King of glory, we welcome you. King of glory, come, O Lord, and manifest yourself. King of glory, come and take your place. King of glory, God Almighty. Come on, church. Come on, church. Let us pray. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. As we've prayed for the nations, I want you to pray for yourself and for your family. 
For the same prayer, I ask us to pray last Sunday. I want us to pray this again. Leviticus 6.13. It says, And the fire upon the altar will always be burning, and it will never go out. I want you to pray over your life and over your family, over your children, and say, Father, let your fire never go out. Let your fire never burn out. Let the fire never die. Over my household, over my life, oh God, let your fire not die. That Lord, my transformation will not be history, but it will be my present story. That when men see me, they will see fire. That when men see me, they will see fire. That in my workplace, oh God, let me be fire. When I go out, let me be fire. Let my children, oh God Almighty, be fire. He says that he makes his, his, he makes his people flames of fire. Say, Lord God Almighty, let me be fire, oh God Almighty. Now when the enemy looks, all they see is fire. Now Lord, let your consuming fire, let it rest, oh Lord Almighty. Now Lord God Almighty, the fire that burns, let it burn, oh God Almighty, within me. Stare in me, oh God Almighty. Stare in me, oh God Almighty. A passion to please you. A passion to pray, oh Lord Almighty. A passion to study your word, oh God Almighty. Let the fire, oh Lord God Almighty, let it not run dry. Let it not run dry. Let it not run dry. Let it not run dry, oh God Almighty. That the fire will never die, oh God Almighty. In Jesus' name. This prayer just dropped and I just want us to pray it. Because sometimes we are living out the lives of those who have gone before us. But we're going to pray that the thing that stopped those who went before you will not stop you. That Father, the fire, the thing that killed the fire of others, let it not kill mine. That Lord, the thing that has quenched other people's fire, the one that has quenched the fire even in the land, let it not kill my fire. Open your mouth and pray this morning. That Lord God Almighty, that which is generational, which has stood and said that in this one's life, there will be no fire. That in this one's life, glory will not be manifest. That in this one's life, they will not see your star. That in this one's life, that you will be a past tense. You will never be present. Say, Father Lord, by the fire of the Most High God, Lord God Almighty, it will not die in my life. It will not die in my time. It will not die in my season. But I will presently, oh God Almighty, be on fire. My husband will be on fire. My wife will be on fire. My sons and daughters will be on fire. My fathers and mothers will be on fire. But our Lord, all over my family, oh God Almighty, let your fire flow, God Almighty. All over this church, oh God Almighty. Every person, oh Lord Almighty, under the sound of my voice, oh God, let them receive the fire of the Most High God. Let it burn, oh God Almighty. Let it burn. Let it burn, oh God Almighty. Let it burn. Let it burn. Let it burn. To the glory of the Most High God. Lord God Almighty, you are the one that is raising an army. And the gates of hell will not prevail. That the chains that held others back, Lord, they are broken in our lives. That that which, O oh God Almighty, has been the limits that man put on themselves, it will not be our limit. That Lord God Almighty, these ones, they will break through barriers. Father Lord, these ones, they will burn through walls. That by our God Almighty, we will jump over the wall. That by our God Almighty, we will overcome the troops. That by our God Almighty, that Lord God Almighty, yes, there will be wind. Yes, there will be, there will be storms. But Lord God Almighty, because you are there, we will be victorious. Lord, we've lifted up the nations unto you, Lord. You that answers, O God Almighty, come and deliver. That your people, O Lord Almighty, will glorify your name. You that answers, come and deliver. That your people will glorify your name. The Bible says that unto him that answers prayers, all flesh will gather. And so, Lord God Almighty, we know that you are the one who has the answer. Release the answer, O God Almighty. That your people will glorify your name. In the mighty name of Jesus. We commit this week, we go ahead into, into your hands. 
that you will have your way and that your name will be glorified. We commit our walk into your hands, O God Almighty, that you will have your name and your name will be glorified. We commit, O Lord, the children, O Lord, into your hands. Lord, come and have your way. And may the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. And may the name of the God of Jacob defend you. May the Lord send you help from his sanctuary. And may the Lord strengthen you out of Zion. May he remember all your offerings and accept all your burnt sacrifices. May the Lord grant you according to your heart's desire. And may the Lord fulfill your purposes. Father Lord, we thank you because it's you that answers. Let your name be glorified, O oh Lord, now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And let's just pray. Let's say, surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. And city of David gave a big... Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you, church. Amen. Have a great day.